Hey everyone and welcome to Quick Review. Today we're going to be looking at Supra Land. It bills itself as a mix between Portal, Zelda, and Metroid. It's also a first person Metroidvania puzzle and literal sandbox game. Because it is literally set in a sandbox. While I don't believe it succeeded in being a mix of everything it set out to be, I do believe that it's a very well made game that's packed full of puzzles, upgrades, humor, and pop culture references, and I thoroughly enjoyed the game as a whole. To start things off, you're basically a toy in a kid's sandbox. It seems that the premise is largely red toys versus blue toys, and that's where the story largely stems from. There's probably some sort of deeper message here, and there's a lot of mentions of some godlike person controlling everyone's lives. Some people believe it, some people don't. I'm not really going to dig for a message, but if you take the time to read what characters say, there is definitely some funny and enjoyable commentary littered everywhere. As a whole, the story is relatively shallow, and as with most games in this genre, it's mostly there to guide the player through the world. Let's quickly look at that world. Many things in the world are made with regular household items. Erasers, pencils, wrenches, and as a whole, the game looks great almost all of the time. It definitely feels like an extremely complex sandbox. There are some clipping issues here and there, but for the most part, the game is visually solid. How about combat? Well, this is honestly the weakest aspect of the game. If I counted correctly, there are only really six varieties of enemies and a grand total of two bosses. Combat doesn't seem to be a huge focus of this game. I don't think I died once to combat, and that's because it was relatively simple. The bosses were a little bit of a letdown, which is really unfortunate, because when I think Metroidvania games, I sort of expect epic and interesting battles that I'm going to remember. So, if the game's strong point isn't combat, what about the exploration and puzzle side of things? This is where I really think Superland shines. The world is littered with hidden areas and puzzles to solve that will either progress you forward in the story or provide you with some sort of upgrade. Some puzzles were really straightforward. Other puzzles were really complex and forced you to use your arsenal in ways you hadn't used them before. For the most part, everything felt relatively fair. If you talk to NPCs and look at what's available to you, everything is more or less solvable. There are definitely some puzzles that are more tedious than others though, and sometimes you really have to backtrack and think about what you left behind in other areas in order to solve puzzles. There was also this brilliant moment where I was temporarily stuck on a puzzle. I turned to the NPC and he said, At this point, 90% of players forget that they can use a block to stop a door from closing or something to that effect. At this point, my palm met my face and I proceeded onwards with the game. There were a few instances like this where the longer you seem to struggle with something, the more NPCs are willing to give you in terms of hints. And it's usually done in somewhat comedic ways as well, which makes you feel like an idiot, but at the same time you laugh. One of my biggest problems isn't with the game itself, but with calling it a Metroidvania game. So, you go through a world, you get upgrades, and those upgrades allow you to access areas you previously couldn't, that you encountered earlier. Supraland does that, so technically yes, it works as a metroidvania? However, while you can backtrack and explore, the game is largely linear. Every major upgrade you unlock, and there are quite a few, triple jumps, grappling hooks, some belt buckle that lets you float on metal, a regular gun, and a teleporter gun they all allow you to go back and access hidden areas. Except they also immediately unlock the next area. Once you get each key item, you can just go directly to the next area. There is no real reason to ever backtrack beyond getting upgrades that you likely won't need. There's one instance where you have to backtrack for story purposes, but that's about it. So while I technically think it is a metroidvania game, I just don't think it does a great job of being one. And why don't you need upgrades? Well, it's because there are two bosses, and those two bosses are puzzles. So there's never really any emphasis on needing to do more damage or being more survivable. Anyways, that's Superland. As a whole, the game feels great. I enjoyed it, and it took me about 10 hours to get through everything. However, I only found 
50% of the items, so that playtime could likely be extended for somebody searching for every item and upgrade. At the moment, there isn't really any reason to replay the game. Once it's done, it's pretty much done. It's also worth saying that this game was largely made by one person, and when you get to the credits, they make sure that you know it. I think it may be one of the best games I've ever played from a mostly one-person team. And while I have said some semi-negative things about the game, they're mostly targeted at the classification of the game. Because you might see Metroidvania and think, awesome, I've wanted to play another Metroidvania game, and then wind up somewhat disappointed. As a whole, if this game said that it was inspired by Zelda and Portal, then I'd have much less to say, because it feels more like a Zelda game to me. Linear progression to get upgrades and items. If you want bonuses, you can go back and use those items to find them. Each area you find upgrades in also feels like a gated dungeon, despite the fact that it is technically connected to the other areas. Regardless, it's a solid game and I can't stress that enough. There's a lot of fun to be had in the sandbox and I highly recommend it as an adventure puzzle game. There's also a demo, so you don't even have to commit to buying it to find out if you enjoy this world. And don't forget, this is just in my opinion. If you disagree, feel like you left something out, or just want to suggest something else for me to review, leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and check back weekly for more reviews.